Welcome to HIM 216, everyone. Uh, this lecture is on Chapter 3. In your textbook, please turn to page 49. And we're talking about number 13 on that page, this coding guideline 13 for etiology manifestations. And we're also going to look at the instructional note for code first, use additional code, and in diseases classified elsewhere. These are very important guidelines to understand. There are certain conditions that have um, both an underlying etiology and body system manifestations due to that etiology. So when that happens, ICD-10 has a coding convention that requires the underlying condition to be sequenced first, followed by the manifestation. Um, anytime you see a, uh, an instructional note for use additional code, um, you will know that uh, at the etiology code, when you see a code first, um, that will also be an etiology manifestation code. So these notes give you the proper sequencing that's required when you are when you are coding. So we're going to look at dementia in the index because this is a, a good example of what etiology manifestation codes look like. So for instance, if we're talking about dementia, the default code for dementia is F03.90. However, if we have dementia with Parkinsonism, we are going, this is considered to be an etiology manifestation, and the code that we sequenced fir sequence first is G31.83. And this is, when we look at this code, it is dementia with Lewy bodies, but it includes dementia with Parkinsonism. And so that is the code that we sequence first. Then we also have a specific code for dementia, F02.80, and this code is for dementia in other diseases classified elsewhere uh, without a behavioral disturbance. Now, when we come to this category, you notice when I click on that code, it doesn't, did not bring me to the beginning of this category. So now when I come up to the beginning of this category, I have an instructional note here that says code first. And it tells me that I have to code first the underlying physiological condition, and it includes dementia with Parkinsonism. You absolutely must follow these notes that are included in the tabular, and that is why it's so important to look the code up in the alphabetical index and then verify it in the tabular. So if I had tried to look at the dementia code before the uh, dementia, looking at the Parkinsonism code, it would have I have, would have looked at this code first note and known that I needed to come over here and do an additional code um, or code something else first. Now, we also have an instructional note that says use additional, and it tells us to use an additional note if applicable to, to identify wandering um, in dementia uh, in conditions classifiable elsewhere, and that is Z91.83. So if my patient has dementia with a behavioral disturbance and wandering is considered to be a behavioral disturbance, and it's not unusual in an Alzheimer's patient, uh, patient or a patient with dementia. And if I go to this code, click on this code, we'll see that this is wandering and diseases classified elsewhere, and it tells us code first. That's a mandatory instructional note, the underlying disease, and it includes Alzheimer's um, along with some other codes that are listed here as well. Now, if we um, look at um, some other conditions, we'll find these instructional notes throughout the tabular. So if, if I go to category, the category for congestive heart failure, it tells me code first 
uh, heart failure, complicating abortion or ectopic pregnancy or molar pregnancy. So that's a mandatory instructional note that I that I must follow. And when you go through, if I just scroll through here, we'll find these coats, these instructional notes scattered throughout the tabular. So again, I have a code first, um, and this is other heart disorders and diseases classified elsewhere. Code first underlying disease, and it lists those. This term in diseases classified elsewhere is your clue that there is another condition that must be sequenced first and that's what code first means it is mandatory for instance if i go to ah uh, not there okay when I go to this particular um, section that's bacterial and viral infectious agents, it tells us these categories are provided as supplementary or additional codes to identify the infectious agents in diseases classified elsewhere. So this note applies to this entire section, B95 through B97. But when I click on the category list, unfortunately, they don't list that at the beginning of each of these categories. And I'm not sure why, but that's why it's important to understand that if you see a category and the name for that category, the description for that category includes the term of disease classified elsewhere. That is your big clue that this code cannot be a first listed code. It can only be a secondary code. So, and you'll see that in all of these categories. Cause of disease classified elsewhere. Cause of disease classified elsewhere. And when we look at, um, uh, some of these chapters. Um, now this doesn't say as a cause of disease classified elsewhere. It says just says not elsewhere classified. That's NEC. So don't confuse don't confuse that um, with um, in disease classified elsewhere. Now on page 50, we have some additional terms that we need to look at. Um, number 14, the word and, we are going to interpret to mean and or if it appears in a title. For example, tuberculosis of bones, tuberculosis of joints, tuberculosis of bones and joints is, categor is in category A18. Um, so when we look at tuberculosis of bones and joints, this is tuberculosis of bones and or joints, uh, tuberculosis arthritis, other bones. So when we have the term and, just slip an or in there with it because it's and or. 15, um, the word with should be interpreted interpreted to mean associated with or due to. And we actually have a change in the guideline for that. So when we look in the 2017 coding guidelines, we have this statement. The classification presumes a causal relationship between the two conditions linked by these terms in the alphabetical index or the tabular list. These conditions should be coded as related even in the absence of provider documentation explicitly linking them unless the documentation clearly states the conditions are unrelated. For conditions not specifically linked by these relational terms in the classification, provider documentation must link the conditions in order to classify them as related. And so I'm going to show you an example of that. If we look at the term diabetes, do you see how it says diabetes with and all these terms listed under here? 
if the patient has any of these conditions, then we assume that <clears throat> it is due to diabetes. And one of the big controversies, if you're someone who's been coding, is cataract. Prior to 2017, we had to have specific documentation that the patient had a diabetic cataract. Otherwise, we didn't apply that code. But that's not the case anymore. So, for instance, if my uh, patient is a type 2 diabetic with a cataract, I'm going to apply the code E11.36. And then, of course, I'm also... Um, uh, going to be coding um, any other types of diabetes that they may have. Now, one of the things that's not included in here are some infectious processes. So those would not, anything that the patient has that is not listed under the term with has to be specifically documented as being associated uh, or due to diabetes in order for us to be able to code it that way. So if my patient is a diabetic and they have osteomyelitis, osteomyelitis is not a condition that's listed under with, oh yes it is, E11.69, I take that back. Um, at any rate, if the patient has a condition that is not listed under with, you don't assume that it's with, the physician has to link them. Now under uh, number 16 we have terms C and C also that follow a main term in the alphabetical index. Anytime you see this these terms you need to follow it. Um, it's an indication that if you see the other um, uh, main term that you might have a more specific code. So if you look at Boyle, it says, see also Fernuncle by sight. So if I click on Fernuncle by sight, then, oh my gosh, look at all this specificity. So chances are that if my patient has a boil of their buttock, that I need to be at this code of L02.32. So anytime you see um, the term C or C also, you want to make sure that you click on that. Um, uh, let's see, dermat C. So I want you to look at this, dermatitis allergic. It has C. Well, C is a mandatory instructional note. Do you see a code here anywhere? No. So you have no choice. If you want to code allergic dermatitis, you have to go to dermatitis contact allergic. You can't do anything else. So C is mandatory and you have to do it or you won't find a code. C also is not mandatory, but most of the time if there's a C also, then you're going to find a much more specific code. Uh, code also tells you that two codes may be required to fully describe the condition. Um, this code, this um, note, doesn't provide sequencing direction, but typically the code that it wants you to code also would be um, a secondary code. We have seen some code also instructional notes um, throughout and I'll see if I can find one real quickly. Um, use additional code is not the same. Uh, okay, so here is an example of a code also. Um, when I look at this code M39.3, stress incontinence, it says code also any associated overactive bladder. And there's no sequencing instructions here. If I go to the beginning of this category, um, I don't I don't see any um, information there. If I go to this code overactive bladder again, look at this category, I don't see any instructional information there either. But anyway, 
code also, if the patient had an overactive bladder, I would need to add that code. And now default codes, the code that's listed, the first code that you see listed under a, a main term or, term or a subterm is considered to be the default code. So for dermatitis, the default code is L30.9. Um, dermal, I have to see the condition. I can't just code dermal. Um, if I look at depression, the default code is F32.9. Many times you will see that the default code is one of the NOS codes. It's an unspecified um, code. So just keep that in mind when I talk about the default code. I mean the, t the code that actually follows the main term in the alphabetical index. Now I'm going to conclude this lecture here. Um, in the next lecture, we're actually going to be looking specifically at the index and the tabular and looking more at the structure um, than the instructional notes. I've gone over the structure somewhat already. And so your question for this lecture has to do with the code first instructional note. Is code first an optional instructional note or is it a mandatory instructional note? So when you see that instructional note in the tabular that says code first, is it a suggestion or is it a requirement? And that will conclude this lecture.